Who's hungry? Yes, sir. The country's best food. Oh, look at this beauty. From New York to LA. All between two slices of bread. Once you take a bite, you can't put it down. <laughs> Piled high. Awesome, yeah. Bazaar. We're doing the uh, classic tartare. Keto. It might be just a little healthier for you. Pastrami and porchetta crammed into a donut. Wow, whoa, 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 what, what is going on here? This is Bite Size, coast to coast. The country's best sandwiches. Did you make that? Like, who made that? First up, LA. The sandwiches that kept us on the map for the past 40, 50 years has been the roast beef and pastrami combination. Steamed pastrami that's passed over to a fresh tomato and basil sauce, and then it's layered with our fresh uh, roast beef, sliced roast beef and the au jus with provolone cheese and cooked peppers. This place has a lot of uh, history. It's been here since 1929. Can I uh, get a number seven, please? Seven? Yeah, here. Uh, for here. <laughs> awesome, yeah. <laughs> it's our number seven roast beef pastrami sandwich, and it's uh, it's definitely the go-to. My father created this roast beef pastrami combination. Cheers. Got a nice sweet tomato sauce, warmness that's just soothing, and these peppers and onions in this marinated in this sauce is just it's a real treat. The texture of this meat, perfect. Mm. All right, so we got the provolone cheese here, right? Goes on the bottom. We got our house-made roast beef. Slather that on there, one bit at a time. And there's our steamed pastrami we add to the fresh tomato sauce. Add a little extra sauce on there. Cooked bell peppers and onions. It's just something that you, you crave. I crave it in the morning and I have a hard time resisting it, you know, at eight o'clock. That sauce they put on it, it's, uh, it warms the heart, it warms the soul, really. Yeah, I've been coming here since the 80s. These guys get up early in the morning, they're cooking everything from scratch. Uh, they don't cut corners. One of the things that, that my, my dad always taught us here is never buy a freezer. And to this day, we don't have a freezer. Everything's fresh. Our roast beef is, is baked daily. Nothing's store bought. And I, I think that's, that's essential, you know, and still trying to keep a price point, you know, low, you know, under $10. Oh, look at this beauty. Look at this. Uh, all my friends get jealous when I take pictures and send it back to them. Mm. You gotta come see what's unique about the place. You gotta walk in, feel it, smell it. You get that smell when you walk in here and you just kinda like, you feel comfort. The police department and all our local, uh, I mean our city uh, employees, they really love those kind of sandwiches, the hot sandwiches. There's a lot of people that are here now in LA are from back east and they walk in as they feel like they uh, stepped into the back east, you know, Chicago or New York or Jersey and they say they have that that feel of, uh, of home. From LA to Chicago and a sandwich for two people. Oh my God, their eyes, they get big. They don't know what to do, you know. Oh, what did I order? They just go crazy for it. Outrageous, it's huge. This sandwich would tear your heart out. Who's hungry? Yes, sir. My name is Ernest Ford, and I am the sandwich guy at Perry's Deli. Sandwiches, anyone, sandwiches. Perry's Deli has been around for 33 years. Can I help? Who's next? We have sandwiches. Smoky Bernstein. That are our favorite. Perry's favorite for the young lady. And we have the big galoot, which is the caveat emptor. One of the number one sandwiches right here. It is a buyer's beware, believe me. And that's what caveat emptor means, buyer's beware. rye bread. You get three slices of rye. It's the best time to come is on rye. This is the Russian, our house dressing. This is what makes the sandwich. I've seen people eat this like soup right out of the cup, man. Tomatoes, turkey, Swiss cheese right on top. Now you get roast beef. Another slice of Swiss. Second layer comes. Coming over to the corned beef. Goes on the turkey. That's just the middle part. Now, monster cheese. You have your lettuce. Drop it right on top. Third layer goes right on top. And we're ready to cut. And that, my friend, it's magic that you open the inside and there's your meats. All I can tell you is enjoy yourself. This is the sandwich to have. Napkins for the mess. 
Enjoy your weekend. Thank you again, okay? Take it easy. From Chicago to Philly and a sandwich that tastes like soup. What are up, what are up? We got a foogie. Hoagie. Philadelphia sandwich. Pho. I used to say pho, and then I've been corrected that I should say pho. It's a uh, Vietnamese pho. soup. It's just amazing. That delicious sandwich at Middle Child. The fogey is a vegan sandwich made of a sauce that tastes like pho. Hey, I'm Matt Kahn. This is Middle Child in Philadelphia. Middle Child is a modern take on an old school luncheonette. The restaurant's called Middle Child because we're a lunch restaurant, so we're between breakfast and dinner, and I'm the Middle Child. All of our ingredients are made fresh every day. Everything tastes excellent. They put the time and care and effort into making the food really good. The chef here is Keith Krajewski. He's been making fancy food for a long time, and now we're lucky enough to have him here. I love our team a lot. Everybody here likes to have fun. Fogey is a combination of two things. Pho is a traditional Vietnamese soup, and hoagie is our version of a sandwich. So we basically took all the flavors of pho and put them inside of a hoagie. So it's a sandwich that tastes like a soup. Fogey, fogey, fogey. We basically start out, we've got a layer of sambal chili paste, so it's a little spicy on the top. Then we've got the pho sauce, which is a pho stock that we turn into a vegetarian mayo. And then there's avocado. We've got eggplant roasted at 500 degrees and some hoisin, so it caramelizes. Then on top of that, we've got fresh onions. On top of that, we've got fresh eggplant and cilantro, a lot of good freshness. And on top of that, we've got fried onions. The eggplant and the avocado create a noodliness uh, that emulates the noodliness of a bowl of pho. It definitely does have a lot of pho flavors in it, for sure, yeah. I like that it's spicy. I like that there's fresh herbs in it. It's not too heavy, like you can eat the whole fogey and be like, it's so delicious, but you don't feel like so full. It's just too good that once you take a bite, you can't put it down and we just tore right through them. Perfect. Yeah. Super spicy, a little sweet. We like to make serious food in a very relaxed environment. Would you pay $72 for a pastrami sandwich? Definitely not your average pastrami sandwich. People in Philly are. And later, this is not your mom's PB&J. We wanted to do a modern twist on a classic nostalgic snack. This just takes it up another notch. We're headed to LA. I definitely need a napkin for this. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. Perfect. Philadelphia is next. And this is our Montreal smoked shrimp. Wow. You have the whole roasted short rib at about seven pounds. It's definitely not your average performing sandwich. I'm Yehuda Seichel. I'm the executive chef of Abe Fisher in Philadelphia. Our concept at Abe Fisher is chef-driven Ashkenazi Jewish food. You'll mostly find Jewish cuisine at, um, let's say, delis or bagel shops. So it's not very often you find it in a fine dining atmosphere. That's kind of what we do here. We named the restaurant Abe Fisher after our owner's relatives. One was named Abe, one was Abe Fisher. So we combined the two and made sort of this fictitious character that loved to travel the world and smoke cigars and he wore a fedora. Our signature dish at Abe Fisher is our Montreal smoked pastrami short rib. Generally, pastrami is made with either using the cut of brisket or the navel. Classically, we decided to take like the most delicious, unctuous, amazing piece of meat, which in my opinion is the short ribs. And we decided to take the technique of pastrami, which is smoking and adding all these spices to it, but using this cut of meat. The Montreal style refers to the technique in which it is pastramatized. There's usually the New York version and the Montreal version. New York is usually a wet brine. In Montreal, they usually do a dry cure. We cure it for 10 days with a whole array of spices. Then we smoke it for a couple hours, and then we comfy it. And then we roast it, and we slice it. So you have the whole roasted short rib. Then you have our house-baked rye bread. You have our three condiments, our bib salad over here. We have our pickle braised red cabbage, and then our cucumber salad over here. So this is for like four people, and then you would get like two starter courses and then dessert. I love Russian dressing, so I would definitely get some of that. And then I'll take some spicy brown mustard. I think that is absolutely important for this whole situation. And then I'll take, you might have, you have to stand up for this, like to really get good leverage. Some of this cucumber business and some cabbage, put it down there. And then we'll take, you know, a couple pieces, maybe three over here. And then you do that, smoosh it down. You guys ready for this or what? 
from Philly to Vegas in a sinful sandwich. We'll be doing the uh, classic tartare. All of the ingredients that go into this very simple dish are the absolute best that we could find. My name is Alex Pitts. I'm the chef at Bazaar Meat in Las Vegas. Jose Andres' style is perfectly, perfectly Las Vegas. Everything is a little bit over the top. Everything's a show. We'll be doing the uh, classic tartare. So it all starts out with the beef. Uh, Dumbo Carte on anchovies, uh, name brand from Spain. There is no better anchovy. Parsley, capers, shallots. Uh, our sauce is based off of Savora mustard. It's a French French brand. It's, a, it's made with spices, more of like your warm spices, spices, clove and allspice and this kind of thing. Um, and it's absolutely delicious. It's definitely not French's. And this we like to serve as an appetizer. So the idea is you take a little bit of your tartare, stuff it inside a parker ass roll, classic American bread, um, and that's your bite right there. We start by making our dressing. Uh, we always start with egg yolk. Incorporate into that. Incorporated that into our Savora mustard. Uh, now we can work in the olive oil. And from there, we start tossing together our tartare. Right. Just slice open the buns. Put about a tablespoon of the tartare right there on the bun. And then from there, We'll cut sandwiches, and that is our favorite way of eating beef tartare right there. Two words you thought you'd never hear together. Onion donuts. We're trying it in San Fran. Those savory donuts plus porchetta. I was afraid of the combination. It was so good, we went back and got another one. And later, this sandwich helped this guy lose 140 pounds. And it's really just cutting out some carbs. We'll tell you where. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. Ingredients are everything to us. Let's grab Gourmet PB&J in LA. I mean, everyone loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, and this just takes it up another notch. We realized nobody had done gourmet pairings with nut butters and jellies. We came up with this concept five or six years ago, and here we are today and serving the great people of Grand Central Market. I'm one of the co-founders of PBJLA. We wanted to do a, uh, a modern twist on a classic nostalgic snack that we all grew up with. We maintain our integrity with all organic produce. Everything on our menu is organic, made from scratch. I saw Indian, I love Indian food. We have uh, a sandwich called the Indian. It's a uh, curried cashew butter with spicy mango chutney with arugula and daikon radish to add a little bit of kick to it. It's nicely packaged here. <laughs> Mm. Kind of a little sweet, and um, the Indian flavors are there, so yeah. We put a lot of effort into our, our pairings. It's a very curated menu, and yes, we absolutely care about everything being organic and of the quality standard that we put in our own bodies. I'm actually from Orlando, Florida, but I heard about this place, so I had to try it out. Something as simple as peanut butter and jelly can be so complex, can be so flavorful. I just absolutely had to try it. One of my favorites is the superfood. It was a monthly special that uh, has been around for about three months now because it did so well. It's cacao infused almond butter with goji berry, acai, and blueberry jam. We cut the crust off so we can seal the contents inside the sandwich so if you take it to go, it doesn't leak out and spill all over the place. And what we do with the crust is we repurpose it into cinnamon sugar bites. I chose the red eye because it's, it's the most popular. It's their staple, it's what they're known for. It's espresso infused peanut butter with dark chocolate raspberry jam. It's our most popular item and it, it put us on the map basically. I actually tried the old fashioned because the owner recommended that one as well and usually when you're in a business like this and they've lasted this long, you know it's gonna be good. Ooh. Young Mr. Red. Oh yeah, that's good. Nice fruity flavors and all, the crusting of it, perfect. Mm. The toast, it makes it so much better. I, need, I, de I definitely need a napkin for this. Exactly. Just a combination of textures, combination of flavor. Oh, this is perfect. From LA to Chicago and an upscale take on a cheap sandwich.
our English muffins that we make in house, toasted with a little bit of clarified butter. I get text messages from people who know that I work here, like the egg fried straight on the flat top. Did you make that? Like who made that? Like where'd that come from? Grape jelly right at the base. Next piece up is a sausage. Like that thing is insane, you know. Hash brown comes out of the deep fryer. If you're waking up and you're a little hungry, but even maybe a little hungover. Fried egg and American cheese. Uh, it's your best friend. That's the gas station sandwich. I'm Matt Danko. I'm the executive chef at City Mouse at the Ace Hotel here in the West Loop in Chicago. It's a casual American restaurant inspired by the seasons, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You'll see some small plates that are a little bit more refined and interesting, but also more or less like grab-and-go items for people. The gas station sandwich that I grew up with was like this really sad piece of like English muffin. It has an egg on it that doesn't look very much like an egg, and you just kind of toss it in a microwave, which, you know, I, I think got me through a lot of times in my life. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to make the hash browns. The bane of the kitchen staff's existence, we make hundreds of these a week. That fried, golden, beautiful patty of hash brown. It creates a really creamy center, but a nice crispy exterior that you just kind of like bite down. It makes a beautiful sound as well. The jelly is very sweet, and the sausage is very savory. The gooiness of like this fried egg and the American cheese kind of like all coming together is really delicious, but also kind of like soul warming. People certainly think that it's just this little thing that's gonna come out to the table, and then when they see it, they're like, what am I about to get myself into? This is kind of like this towering sandwich that you're not certainly ready for. From Chicago to San Fran, and a savory donut. We have a passion fruit milk chocolate, an orange creamsicle, a chocolate rose, chocolate spice, and a chocolate star anise. And then we have our onion donut. It's a onion and thyme donut. We made it specially for the porchetta sandwich. It's an interesting combination. I'm a little bit scared. It's hard to imagine how it'll taste like together. Savory donuts plus porchetta? I kind of have to be here. There's a lot of going on in your mouth that really brings out that flavor, that wow, whoa, 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 what, what is going on here? I am Thomas Odermatt. I'm the owner of Rolli Rolli. In Switzerland, we have a butcher shop, and that's our tradition to make a porchetta sandwich every Saturday. And we have a line in Switzerland, the same as we have in San Francisco. Oh, man, it's so is very Italian street food. To make a really good porchetta that has that skin that's really beautifully colored, it takes about four and a half hours. A porchetta, to me, has the flexibility to do some new style of making a sandwich. And we found this donut from Dynamo Donut. The ingredients they infuse is very Mediterranean, so we're not going too wild. I thought it was gonna be a, like a sweet donut with the salty porchetta, but it was actually kind of nice that it was like a more savory donut. It's like a great combination that had a nice like contrast of flavors. I'm Rodrigo Gonzalez. I'm with Dynamo Donuts. I came up with the recipe. It's a onion and thyme donut with a peppered brown sugar toss. It was mainly just coming up with ingredients that paired well with the meat that was being served. We definitely wanted to keep the meat as a star. There's definitely the curiosity of like, oh, like a savory donut. It's something that is not very commonly seen. She said donut, and I said, oh. <laughs> They're doing this incredible collab with Dynamo with a savory donut, so I'm here. We have the donut, and we have very thin sliced porchetta meat, and a little bit of an onion marmalade, and then we have shinguku, and then we sprinkle a little bit of a mix of brown sugar. I soaked up all the juices. I washed them like wipe it in the porchetta juices, which was amazing. I thought they had this event a few times, but they sold out within an hour. I knew I had to go really early. I thought it'd be sweeter than it is. I was afraid of the combination. I don't know. Like meat in a donut. It doesn't sound great, but this works. It was so good, we went back and got another one and this. <laughs> 
two donuts, one regular. I'm not eating all three right now. I just have to see which one looks prettiest. This sandwich helped this guy lose 140 pounds. You're still getting a lot of food, but it might be just a little healthier for you. This is Bite Size Coast to Coast. You're watching Bite Size Coast to Coast. I hope who's next? Let's stop in Chicago. So in Chicago, everybody knows we're known for super hearty, filling food, pizza, Italian beef, hot dogs, everything. Of course, with us being Epic Deli, we like to take traditional sandwiches and just kind of twist them up, do something crazy with them. You're still getting a lot of food, but it might be just a little healthier for you. My name is Tyler Wildy. I attribute this sandwich to myself being able to lose 140 pounds in a year. I mean, of course, the gym too. Epic Deli is a crazy sandwich shop. We're just north of Chicago in McHenry, Illinois here, right on the border of Wisconsin. Everything is huge. It's epic, yeah. Portions are huge. Oh yeah. If you're dining with us, it's never an epic fail. You'll just always leave epically full. We've won a bunch of different awards. We've been voted best deli seven years in a row. Best sandwich shop six years in a row. We really appreciate it and we love that everybody likes to come out and try something different. One of our favorite things to do here is Italian beef. It's a Chicago staple. Shaved roast beef that's still very rare. Finish in a beef au jus. Put it on a hoagie roll. And then either sweet peppers or hot jardinier. We have different versions of the Italian beef sandwich you can get. The most popular Italian beef we do is the keto Italian beef. We're actually making a 12 inch tortilla out of shredded mozzarella cheese filling it with Italian beef and sweet peppers, rolling it up. It's been very, very popular. My wife and I have been doing keto for about a year now. Between her and I, we've lost over 250 pounds. Now, we had a lot of customers asking us just what we were eating, and it's really just cutting out breads and cutting out some carbs. And this way, we can keep it as an absolutely epic sandwich still because it's made out of mozzarella cheese. You're still getting a large jumbo sandwich. Even people that aren't on this diet have been really enjoying this sandwich. What's your favorite spot to grab a bite or two? Tell us on social media.